Hi, my name is Robbie Hurst. I'm a CFI of North Texas Regional Airport, and today I want to do a quick video over some quick reference items as far as the Cessna 172 systems goes. And to be specific, I'm talking about the Cessna 172 Skyhawk with the G1000. The first thing I want to talk about is going to be our engine. So we have an acronym for our engine. It's going to be LHAND. So that's going to be a Lycoming IO 360 with horizontally opposed cylinders. It's air-cooled so we don't have a water cooler or anything like that on it. Normally aspirated, so it doesn't have a turbocharger, and direct drive, meaning that our prop is bolted to the, uh, to the crankshaft. There's no belt or, uh, or gears causing that prop to spin. We've got a fuel injective engine. Some older models use a carburetor, um, in which case you have to be concerned about carburetor icing and turning on car peat. Um, but we've got a fuel injected engine um, which reduces some of those concerns and it's a four cylinder engine. Moving down, taking a look at our prop, we've got a two bladed prop and it's a fixed pitch prop. Other aircraft have variable pitch prop um, that you can uh, change the pitch for efficiency um, but we've got a fi fixed pitch prop so you're not able to move it and again want to reiterate it's a direct drive, so it's bolted directly to the, the crankshaft. Looking at our fuel system, we have a total amount of fuel on board of 56 gallons, but our usable gallons is going to be 53, so there's three gallons of unusable fuel. Um, there's a gallon and a half in each wing that is below the intake valve for our fuel system. So we have 53 usable gallons that we're able to use. It's a gravity-fed system with an engine driven fuel pump. So um, we've got a, a engine driven fuel pump that is on operation anytime our engine is operating, but we also have an auxiliary fuel pump. So we'll use that auxiliary fuel pump in order to prime the engine um, for startup. And if we ever had a failure of that engine driven fuel pump, we've got that backup auxiliary as well. And we have a vent on our left tank that helps our um, fuel flow. So if you were to take a water bottle and turn it upside down, it kind of goes look, 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 um, and it, the fuel flow is choppy and it's put in compression on the uh, on that water bottle. Um, but if you were to poke a hole in the top of that water bottle, that uh, water would flow through smoothly and uh, there would be no stress on the bottle. Well, you can think about that bottle like our fuel tank. Um, if we were to... Um, not have that uh, fuel vent, then our fuel flow would be inconsistent and um, it would put a lot of pressure and vacuum on those on those tanks. So that fuel vent just helps with the, the fuel flow there. Talking about our gear, we have a fixed landing gear, so they're always out. It's a tricycle configuration, so we're not a tail wheel, it's going to be a, a standard uh, tricycle landing and we have hydraulic disc brakes. So if you were to say come out on during your pre-flight and see some pink liquid underneath the, the tires, that would be an indication that you have a, a problem with your brake system and you wouldn't want to go fly that day. Going over V-speeds, um, V-speeds are something that's very important and you should really have just about all of these memorized. Um, so we've got VX, uh, which is our best angle of climb at 62, VY, best rate of climb at 74. We have VA, which is our maneuvering speed. And as we know, uh, maneuvering speed will decrease as our weight decreases. So I have a couple of examples pulled from the POH here um, showing how that uh, V speed will uh, decrease with weight. Um, with uh, our V flaps extend, um, for 10 degrees of flaps, you need to be able, you need to be under 110 knots, and for uh, 20 to full, you need to be under 85 knots. VNO or our max cruising speed, um, that's going to be the top of the green arc. You only want to fly above that if you are in perfectly smooth air, um, and that's going to be 129 knots. And V uh, never exceed is going to be. Um, 163. So you never want to go higher than 163 knots in the uh, Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Our VSO, which is going to be our stall speed and the landing configuration with full flaps, is 48 knots. VS1, or clean configuration, is going to be 53 knots. VG, or best glide, is going to be 68. And VR, or rotate, is going to be 55. I have a couple of uh, other uh, good-to-know speeds. They're not necessarily V-speeds, but just other things to keep in mind. 
that uh, our cruise climb, the POH recommends climbing between 75 and 85 knots. Um, our max crosswind is going to be 15 knots. That's the, the max demonstrated crosswind for that aircraft. For the traffic pattern, I usually tell my students um, on downwind to uh, shoot for 90 knots, on base to shoot for 80 knots, and final to be uh, shooting at 70 knots, and short final be anywhere between 65, 70 knots for a normal landing. However, on a short field landing, the POH recommends um, your final approach being at 62 knots because the, the more speed you have, the more float you'll have. So the POH recommends an airspeed of 62 knots for that short field landing. Moving on to our oil system. So the POH says that we need to have five to eight quarts. Um, our school policy says that we need to have between six and eight quarts. Six is the lowest mark. So we always wanna make sure that we're six or above um, anytime that you're flying one of our aircraft. We have an engine driven oil pump um, that's always in operation whenever your, uh, uh, your engine's operating. And the purpose of our oil is to cool the engine. We've got a, a oil uh, cooler. Um, that helps dissipate some of that heat from the engine in addition to the ram air. Um, it seals it, so those cylinders, you've got a cylinder here and you've got a piston coming in and out. And there is a very small gap uh, between the, the piston and the cylinder and the oil helps seal all of the gaps in that um, and it lubricates. So it's, uh, all of the pieces of our engine is metal, um, so the, the oil helps lubricate that um, so that they move freely and smoothly our electrical system. So this is going to be an important system for us to go over and is a very common question on your uh, check ride. So we have a 24 volt system. So our systems are all running on 24 volts. That system is powered by a 60 amp alternator producing 28 volts and it is a belt driven alternator. So you can see that belt if you look at the front of the cowling, um, it's right behind the prop. It's producing 28 volts, and the thought process is those extra uh, 4 volts are for charging your batteries. Um, and we've got two batteries. We have a main battery that is running on 24 volts um, that feeds both your main and your essential bus. And you have a standby battery that's also a 24 volt battery that is only feeding the essential bus. So you're going to lose everything on your main bus, and you're only going to have the items on your essential bus. Um, if you're going for your instrument rating, it's very likely that your DPE will want you to know what is on that essential bus because if you're starting to lose electrical power and you're in IMC, you're about to have some issues. So you need to know what you're going to lose when you lose that main battery. Um, so the items that you will keep um, is going to be your PFD, your standby instrument lights, your ADC and your AHARs, uh, engine instruments, COM1, and NAV1. That will be all that you have left if you're running on your standby battery. So that's a brief uh, discussion over the Cessna 172 Skyhawk systems. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. I'm happy to help any way I can. And good luck on your pilot journey. Fly safe.